Your Excellency, Ambassador Emerson, representatives of the US Embassy in Germany, representatives of LIFE and the Leuphana University Lüneburg, teachers, students, organizers, participants of the school election project. For us, Friedrich Ebert Foundation, it is a pleasure to hold this final session of the school election project. A warm welcome to all of you. We did so hosting the final event four years ago with uh, Ambassador Murphy by then. And I recall lively debates and I call an election forecast that was very much in line with the best polling results and with the final result. And it was uh, on the same level as all the professional forecasts elaborated by uh, specialized and well-paid teams. The task to forecast the result of the presidential race is normally based on sorting facts. The economic situation, for instance, has to be considered. We all recall the phrase, it's the economy is stupid. And your teams here have studied both the overall situation in the United States and the different regional and local patterns. Yes, there are different perceptions between Detroit and San Francisco. Boom and bust can be found at the same time at different places. I'm sure all this has been taken into consideration when you worked on your results. I'm sure your forecast is based on careful analysis. But this year, all seems completely different. When we look at the actual campaigning trail, we might become convinced that reason and facts play a minor role. Emotions, especially anger, fear, are stirred and seem to be the dominant message. Nobody likes negative campaigning, but it proves to be very successful and very forceful. So on Wednesday morning, it will be very interesting to compare a forecast that is based on factual analysis with the election result after a very specific campaign. I understand that election time is the perfect opportunity to study the inner forces of a society, to understand what moves and shakes a country. I'm glad to see that both politics and international affairs are of so much interest for you, for you as the representatives of the younger generation. This interest is essential to democracy. So I hope that this actual endeavor will lead to results beyond tomorrow, that leads to a steady interest in international affairs, especially in a deeper understanding of the United States of America. Basically, it's not websites and mouse clicks. It is human interest and human interaction that determines our bilateral relationship. So I hope for you to carry on beyond tomorrow. Thank you very much. means it's my turn. Hey everybody, guten tag. How y'all doing? You excited about tomorrow? More to the point, are you excited about tomorrow night, late, 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 because that's really, it's not until then that we'll begin to have a sense of what's happening. This is an excuse to stay up late and tell your parents you're doing homework. Heck of a deal. Um, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure and privilege for me to be here uh, with you today. And what a beautiful room, huh? And uh, in particular, uh, Alexander, to be a guest of the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung. Uh, it's, this is in my bio, and I don't know if people know this, but I actually came to Germany in 1988. It was my second trip here as part of a young leaders delegation uh, sponsored by the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung. And met, was, there were four Americans and 
and four Germans, and uh, we spent about two and a half weeks traveling through the country. So I have great affection for this organization, and, uh, and it's really good to be back here. I also want to thank and congratulate all of you, the students. You know, you are part of um, over 3,000 students in Germany who have been participating in this project. And uh, I guess this is the second time that the uh, American Embassy here has been involved as a co-sponsor. And so it's, uh, it's just great to be back, great to be sponsoring this important uh, effort to help you and hopefully you can help others understand uh, the nature of what's going on politically in the United States of America. And, and our somewhat odd electoral process. I've got a question for you though. And, uh, and, and I know the answer to it, and I bet a lot of you do too. Who's gonna win the presidency tomorrow? <laughs> it's an easy answer, and the answer is not the name of one of the candidates who's running. Anybody know the answer? Whoever gets 270 electoral votes. That's what I've been saying for weeks when I get asked that by the press all the time. Uh, but then that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So I think it'll be, uh, it'll be very, very interested, and I'm particularly pleased to hear that North Carolina is one of the states that's been adopted by this group because that is a state that's going to be of great, great importance to, um, uh, to the election tomorrow. So I think all of us are here interested in, uh, uh, who are here are interested in hearing about that. I just want to thank a few folks who have been very involved in this uh, project. Dr. Karen Ernst. Where's Karen? Sitting. Huh? She's out sick. Oh, okay. Karen Ernst. Uh, Katja Kruger uh, and Susanna Schneider from Life Exploring in Berlin. We also have Professor Dr. Torben Schmidt. Where, okay, there's Torben back there. Where are some of the others I mentioned? I just wave your hand. Oh, there you are. Okay, good. Uh, th thanks very much. And uh, Johannes uh, Kaliampos and Janina Schmidt. Where, where are you guys? Right, boom, boom. All right, fantastic. Sorry, I hope I didn't destroy your names too much. Um, from Lufana University uh, in Lundberg. And with the help of the Transatlantic Outreach Program in Washington, D.C., uh, we were able to team up with some American schools to exchange views. And we have Wood Powell here from, uh, is that you, Wood? Fantastic, great. Thank you for being here uh, from the uh, Transatlantic Outreach. And uh, of course, my colleagues, Jeremy Fowler, Martina Cole, who worked so hard to put all this together, and, and with us as well are Mike Reinert and um, uh, Michelle Logston, who are respectively the, the head of public diplomacy, public affairs, and the head of cultural affairs at Mission Germany at the embassy. And I, I just all want, also want to say what a thrill it is for me to be back with Bill Chandler. He and I sort of cut our teeth politically in California, and it's, uh, we'll be on the panel together, uh, moderated, I'm sure, beautifully by uh, Juliana Schäuble, who the very first editorial board I did here in Germany, at Tagesspiegel, you were in the room for that. So uh, in any event, it's great to be with, uh, great to be with you guys, too. Um, I, I don't have a speech per se, but I'll just put things in a little bit of context. And I, I think, uh, Alexander, your comments were very apropos. Uh, I've been pretty active and engaged politically. I can remember my first election I really paid attention to. Believe it or not, I was in second grade, and it was the election where uh, John F. Kennedy beat Richard Nixon. And I can remember that my parents, who at the time were of a breed that no longer exists, you would have called them Rockefeller Republicans in those days, um, they were going to support Richard Nixon and I, all of six or seven years old was for John F. Kennedy. I won that election, by the way. <laughs> and uh, my parents subsequently changed their political affiliation, but um, I have paid, I was telling someone at our senior staff meeting this morning who's a big Cubs fan, the Chicago Cubs, and all of you follow that, the Cubs won the World Series, first time in 108 years that they won it, so it was a big deal in Chicago. I said, and he stayed up, got up in the middle of the night to watch the game. I said, you know, a, a presidential election for me is sort of like the Cubs being in the World Series for you. It's, uh, it's something I can't resist. I've been 
intimately involved, as Bill knows, in uh, just about every presidential campaign since, uh, really since the 1981, which although I, I also volunteered in some earlier ones. And, um, and, and, but I couldn't be involved in this one because of the, my role as ambassador. But there's no question I got asked about it a lot. And, uh, and I would say starting about a year ago, uh, particularly when we saw the emergence of a very surprising outsider, actually two surprising outsiders in both, each party coming on, the people started getting very, very interested in this race. And you couldn't have a conversation with anybody here in Germany without doing 15 or 20 minutes on the presidential campaign. And so, um, just to let you know how insightful I am, uh, when people ask me, I don't know, a year and a quarter ago about the presidential primaries when Donald Trump was starting to make some statements that most of the political experts said, oh, that'll end his campaign, and he kept on moving on. I said, oh, this guy, he won't even last past the fall. You know, he's kind of like the pizza guy from four years ago or... You know, we always have these candidates that capture the imagination in the year before. Well, that obviously didn't work out. And then if you asked me in the spring when he started winning some primaries and caucuses, I would have explained to you that in Republican primary politics, you have um, really a two-part two primary. You have a primary for someone who emerges as the, as the darling of the right wing of the Republican Party. And then you have someone who emerges as an establishment candidate, and typically the establishment candidate, and if you think about Romney and McCain and Bush and Dole and Bush, usually wins the nomination, almost always wins the nomination against the, the more right winger. And um, well, this campaign with 17 people in the race ended up with two people representing the right, a guy named Ted Cruz, who was a United States Senator, and then Donald Trump, who was completely an outsider, and we all know the end of that story. So the point is, take whatever the heck I have to say today with a lot of grains of salt, because I've been wrong. Uh, I've been wrong twice in this uh, in this particular process. But I will say that um, the consequences of this particular election, I think, are significant. And if you watch the presidential debates, I actually felt the best one from the standpoint of really informing the voter, voters was the last one. And the reason for that was the candidates actually addressed and were forced by the moderator, who I think did a very good job, to address the substantive, um, both philosophical and ideological and, and policy differences uh, on a whole host of different issues. And I don't think you could have watched that debate uh, and come away from it thinking that there aren't some real dramatic differences between these two candidates, between they, the way they uh, view the world and how they would seek to govern, at least from the standpoint of uh, administration policy. And I think that's helpful. And this is definitely not one of those elections like we've heard in the past, oh, there's no difference between the two of them. I think people recognize there actually is quite a difference between the two of them. And so for that reason, I think it's a significant defining moment and a moment of choice for the American people and a choice that will have uh, ramifications and an impact around the world. So you picked a really good and important and consequential election to dive into. And I, and I'm sure Bill and Juliana feel the same way, am very much looking forward to hearing about your predictions and, uh, and then of course to watching whether or not they come true. So with that, thank you very, very much. I appreciate your all being here. Bye-bye. OK, can you hear me all? Yes. Thank you very much for your warm welcome, Mr. Ambassador and Mr. Dr. Kalbeit. I'm very excited to be here. I'm very proud to be here, and I'm very proud to welcome you all to Berlin, to the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung. Um, we are very nervous and very excited of what is, what's going on in the US. In less than 16 hours, um, I think a village called Dixville, Dixville Notch in New Hampshire will be the first village we get results from, so it won't be uh, too long from now on, um, and we, can all, we all know who will be the next president. 
we hope you know it uh, until to Wednesday morning when we some of us come together again and discuss what's um, what's the outcome of this election. More than 3,000 um, students, high school students in Germany, um, took part in this school project, school election project. More than 160, as I heard, I hear right now from 30. Four schools in Germany, um, very welcome to all of you. Some of you are from Berlin, so it's not too far. Um, you, when the school year started, you, um, that, uh, you, you went into the details of American national policy, of American regional policy. You got a state, you adopted a state from Alabama to um, Wisconsin, Wyoming, um, and you really went into the details. You looked at the media, the um, politics, economics, um, democracy, uh, society, and you think you know now and you know today how the state is going to vote. Um, what we are going to do in the next hour is to collect your votes. Um, not all of the states are here represented, but um, many are. And I will call um, each state um, after the other, starting with Alabama and ending up with Wyoming. Sorry for that. Um, I hope it won't take too long because we have um, an award ceremony afterwards as well. And I get help from Mr. Ambassador um, Emerson and um, um, Professor Chandler, who will help me get into some of the, of the states, of the swing states, the so-called toss-up states, where you even couldn't decide on who is going to win. And I would say we just um, start the procedure. We start with um, a brief um, welcome of um, Wood Powell um, from the Transatlantic Outreach Program. Um, who has, as I've heard, a video from your blog, uh, from your team in Washington, D.C., and you, perhaps you would join me up here on stage and we could go, go on. It's always a pleasure to be back in Berlin. Um, I lived here uh, from 1988 to 1991. My father was stationed at Tempelhof uh, as a, a helicopter pilot flying around and uh, got to see the wall come down just a few blocks from here. And um, it's like returning home. So it's always good to be home. Um, I've been traveling in Germany for two weeks. I fly back to DC tomorrow and I have done my civic duty and I have voted, I promise you that. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Schäuble. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, thank you to our USMC contacts, um, Martina Cole and Jeremy Fowler, who have been working with us since the get-go. Um, thank you to all of our public and private partners, including Deutsche Bank and the Land Day and Project for helping us get involved at the very beginning. An extra special thank you to all of our teachers and young learners here in the room with us today for inviting your American counterparts into your classrooms to collaborate on their, this very important project. The Transatlantic Outreach Program, which I represent, was established as a public-private partnership between the Foreign Office of the Federal Republic of Germany the Goethe Institute, Deutsche Bank, the Robert Bosch Stiftung, and the Siemens Corporation to promote information about you all, about contemporary Germany, to American social studies and STEM teachers and their pupils. We have over 1,400 alumni who have traveled to Germany on our behalf, and we work with about 3,000 teachers a year in professional development workshops, and we reach an estimated 350,000 students a year in the United States. While the focus of this specific project here today has been about the US election, every exchange is by its nature bi-directional. And I know your American counterparts have learned a great deal about you and about young Germans as they have been impressed by your knowledge about the US government and its elections. We at TOP have been honored to play a small role in helping to forge these school partnerships with our alumni in over 20 US states. Virtual exchanges such as these will continue to play a greater role for TOP as we strive to prepare teachers and students for the global competency evaluation of the 2018 PISA study. I have heard German ambassador to the US Peter Wittig many times describe the relationship between President Obama and Chancellor Merkel as a strong one that has had significant impact on transatlantic ties over the eight, past eight years. No matter what happens after tomorrow's election, each and every one of you and us has the opportunity to maintain this key German-American relationship. After all, the day after we will be November 9th, a day that should remind us all that walls fall and people unite 
for a pro prosperous future. Whether your future is to attend university or to begin vocation, my advice to each and every one of you is to embrace every test, homework assignment, project, every success, and yes, every failure as an opportunity to grow and improve the world in which we live. On behalf of the entire top team at the Guernsey Washington, Jan, Jenny, Molly, Kristoff, and me, we look forward to more exchanges to come. Thank you and enjoy the following video. Transatlantic Outreach Program here in Washington, D.C. I'm Jan Steele, and I'm the Education Coordinator. The Transatlantic Outreach Program is honored to be the U.S. contact for all American teachers involved in the 2016 U.S. election project. We are grateful to all the teach.us.org partners for their incredible support of this great project, and these include the Wood Final Universität Lunenberg, Life Eiffel, and of course, the U.S. Embassy in Berlin. We also extend our thanks to our own partners, and these include the Federal Foreign Office of Germany, the Goethe Institute, Deutsche Bank, the Robert Bosch Stiftung, and the Siemens Corporation. This upcoming vote is one of the most important elections of our history. Election day is tomorrow, November 8th, and Washington, D.C. will be under the microscope of the world as American people decide who will live in this building right behind me. Students, we've been so inspired by your diligent research, your creative projects, and your personal engagement in international diplomacy. Thank you for your involvement in this project and for helping increase international understanding between the United States and Germany. We've been so proud to have teachers who have traveled to Germany with the Transatlantic Outreach Program involved in this project and to have their students engaging with you uh, online. I expect that as the results come in, you'll be sitting on the edge of your seats. We will too. And no matter the outcome of this election, we believe very strongly that the future of transatlantic relations is in your hands. Stay in touch with your American partners. Consider, consider spending a year abroad in these beautiful United States and continue this critical dialogue that you have begun with this project. Please enjoy a few clips from our American teachers who've been involved in this project. Vielen Dank und auf Wiedersehen. Danke. Ciao. Tschüss. I thought it was interesting to see how Germany thought that climate change was a bigger issue for America um, regarding like politics and what we're learning here. Um, also, the concerns that we have for America are much different than what Germany thinks. I was very impressed on how the German kids knew so much about this election. <laughs> There also was a blogger team, a blog team, um, who was um, reporting out of the US. Um, I think Brandon Greenberg is not here today. Um, he should have uh, sat next to me. But we have a, another video message from him, and I think we should listen to it now. Tobias and Felix, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for being part of Elections 2016. As a blogging team, we really tried to bring you guys a lot of personal 
and political content on the national, state, and local level from all of our experiences as high school, college students, and American peers. We think that Elections 2016 has been a great opportunity to facilitate cross-cultural communication between Americans and Germans, and we hope that you guys have learned a lot from us, just as we've learned a lot from you, and that you guys have learned a lot from each other. And so as the elections approach, no matter what happens, we just want to thank you guys for being part of the project. As you'll see, I'm in beautiful Washington, D.C. with the Lincoln Memorial right behind me. And we know that it's going to be great no matter what happens in the elections. So again, thank you guys so much for being part of the project with us, and we hope that you've enjoyed. Bye-bye. They really did an amazing job. Um, if you haven't looked into it on the blog, you should, you should do it um, after this afternoon. But now, I think we should move on. Um, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Chandler, would you please join me on stage? Um, we should go into details with the states here. I can even walk around because I have this wonderful headphone. <laughs> have you voted already, by the way? Should we ask? <laughs> no. Um, how we are going to do this? Uh, we have 50 states, starting with Alabama. Um, sometimes we have more than one school. Um, sometimes the schools aren't here. So um, either I either present the result of the school, or if you are here, um, the specific school, please stand up and say what you are what you voted for. Um, sometimes we have states where. One school um, thinks um, Hillary Clinton is going to win, and sometimes the other school thinks it's Trump. So that's what we call a toss-up vote. If you have this, um, we will let you decide. We will talk about this, um, um, let you decide who is going to win. And we all put it into an electronic map. Here are the technic team, technical team on the side. And in the end, we have all 50 states together, since we have uh, schools for every single state, which is amazing, I think. Um, and I would say, let's get started. We have around 50 minutes, I think, so we, we shouldn't spend too much time on the first three states, but let's hear. We have um, the state of Alabama, um, and the Peter Hertling Gymnasium of Nutting is not here today, but they think the state goes to Donald Trump. And now you can applaud or whatever. <laughs> can you see it on the map already? Wonderful. I don't think that's the biggest surprise. Um, let's look at Alaska. Huberto Schwarz, Berufskolleg in Soest, thinks it's going to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I will see. I, I would say that would be a surprise <laughs> because Alaska in most of the presidential elections and you know almost all that I can remember uh, has typically gone for the Republican candidate and it is the home of Sarah Palin but who knows what do you think I, I, I would say it's a very big surprise if that's if that's the case yeah um, no, yeah, Sarah Palin's hometown and home state, so it's, it's going the other way. <laughs> but we have learned that the um, students of the last years were much smarter than the professional um, pollsters, so <laughs> <laughs> we take the Hillary Clinton vote. Now it gets exciting. Arizona, we have two schools who are not here either. Um, it's the Albert Schweitzer. Gymnasium in Leichingen and the Martin Butzer Gymnasium in Deerdorf and the first school thinks the state of Arizona goes to Donald Trump and the second school thinks it goes to Hillary Clinton. Now I would like to have your comments on this. Why it is so difficult to get decided on this state? Uh, this, this is a difficult one. 
it, it, it is close to a toss-up. Uh, uh, John McCain is running for re-election there, and so that's a, a factor for the Republicans. But remember that the uh, increase in the Latino voting in many states is making a difference, and this is one of those. And uh, we, we know that uh, Donald Trump made some rather negative remarks about Mexicans, and so that doesn't play so well in Arizona, in some parts of Arizona. Yeah, I would agree with that, and, um, and just, um, uh, just add that Arizona is one of the states that the Clinton campaign is actually focusing on because they think it's a possible pickup state, a state that voted for, uh, for Mitt Romney, for example, that maybe they could change to blue, um, but 100% uh, but, but I, I, is going to depend on Latino turnout. So now I would ask you, what do you think? How is Arizona going to vote? I would say you could stand up if you think it goes to Hillary Clinton. Perhaps we have a majority already. <coughs> Who is for Hillary Clinton? This is not who you want. This is who you think is going to win Arizona, just to make They that know. <laughs> but I think that's clear, Dr. Cole. <laughs> so we say this state of um, uh, Arizona goes to Hillary Clinton. Arkansas. We have two schools who are here. So I would ask um, the Goethe Gymnasium Lichterfelde in Berlin to stand up and give us uh, your idea how this state is going to vote. We adopted the state of Arkansas with six electors and predict that Donald Trump will win our state. <coughs> and um, the next school, Dr. Wilhelm André Gymnasium in Chemnitz, who is here as well. Welcome to Berlin. What is your vote? We are convinced that Donald Trump is going to carry the vote for presidency in Arkansas. You know, what's interesting about that, of course, is Arkansas was Bill and Hillary Clinton's home state, where Bill Clinton served as governor for many, many years. And, uh, and of course, in both Clinton elections, Arkansas did go Democratic. But ever since then, in the four elections since then, it's gone Republican. And, uh, and the state seems to be trending much more Republican. So uh, I would say despite the fact that Hillary Clinton lived there for 16 years or so, uh, that one sounds about right to me. Quite sad for her, I would say. Now we get a really big state, California, 55 votes. <laughs> Are you from California? <laughs> we have two schools here. Um, so I'm uh, asking Johann Gottfried Herder Gymnasium in Halle, um, what is your vote on this? We think that the state of California will go to Hillary Clinton. And what is the opinion of Humboldt Gymnasium Oranienburg? Berlin. Oranienburg, Berlin. Köpenick. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we will predict that uh, the state of California with 50, 50, 55 electoral votes will go to Hillary Clinton. Okay, that's clear. But now it gets complicated again, Colorado. Only nine, only nine electoral votes. Um, we have the Robert Blum Gymnasium from Berlin who is not here, unfortunately. No. Um, and the Lessing Gymnasium Hohenstein Ernsthal. The Robert Blum Gymnasium thinks Donald Trump is going to win and the Lessing Gymnasium thinks Hillary Clinton is going to win. Again, the question to both of you, why is it so difficult to put, check this one? This one really is a toss up. This is a real toss-up. Could go either way. I personally think Clinton will carry it, uh, but it could go the other way. So if you vote for Trump on this one, you may you may be right. Yeah, I would uh, I would agree with that. Um, the uh, the state has it's it's a true swing state. I mean, it's gone back and forth with Democrats, Republicans. I think Bill Clinton won it once, lost it once. Um, I think that uh, George Bush won it both times. Uh, it is a western state that um, 
Uh, and m most Western states, uh, the pure West, I mean, kind of the Rocky Mountain West, if you think, uh, you know, places like uh, Wyoming and Montana and Utah and, and, and all are often go Republican in presidential elections. But Colorado does have a large Latino population, and it is also a state that's increasingly been gentrified by young people uh, moving there, putting down roots, etc. And it was the first state in the nation to vote to make marijuana use legal. So that was the last election that so occurred in Colorado. So my guess is uh, it, it's, it's helped to, the demographic changes have moved it into much more of a true swing state. And I think most pollsters see it as a leaning, leaning they would call that a lean uh, democratic one. If Trump wins Cal Colorado, that's actually a big win for him. Can you, t can you tell us around what time we would know um, Wednesday morning? Well, Colorado's in the mountain time zone, so that's two hours uh, later than New York. Uh, here, mm -hmm. I would say 4 a.m., yes, a good guess. Mm -hmm. That's the time we have to get, we have to get up. Close, actually, that one might close at 7 instead of 8. But, um, but yeah. in any event, it, it'll take a while. They're not going to call that one early because they want to count the votes because it is yeah. such a close one. Yeah, maybe 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Long night. Let's take an easy state, Connecticut. Robert Boom Gymnasium Berlin, who is not here, has already also voted for Hillary Clinton. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we, um, we go back to Colorado and we ask you to, let's say, take your hands up if you think Hillary Clinton is going to win this state. Perhaps it's easier. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's ask for Trump. Only one hand, please, per person. <laughs> I think it's Clinton. And I'm neutral, I'm a journalist, you know. <laughs> I did not hear that. Connecticut, I said, I'm sorry. Um, Robert Blum Gymnasium Berlin, and um, they think the seven votes go to Hillary Clinton. Now we have um, Delaware. And I've heard that the Gustav Heinemann Oberschule is here. Um, could you give us your vote on this state, please? Delaware has been a safe state, and our closer research has confirmed the states. So we've come to the conclusion that uh, Delaware's three electoral votes will go to Hillary Clinton. The same opinion has the Ricarda Huch Schule in Drei Eich. I think that's in Hessen. <laughs> um, they also think Hillary Clinton is going to win this one. Florida, another swing state. Um, we have two schools who aren't here today. It's the Gymnasium Stift Keppel uh, aus Hillenba out of Hillenbach and Heinrich Böll Gymnasium in Saalfeld. They both think the 29 votes go to Hillary Clinton. Is that safe? Is that a safe state already? <laughs> That's the one we'll be up for quite some time on, I think. I mean, you may remember the uh, Al Gore, George Bush election. We didn't know Florida's results for six weeks until after the election. Um, and, uh, and this is sort of the classic swing state. Uh, and um, I, I, think, I think it's, you know, there are a lot of, lot of variables. Uh, it's a state that Donald Trump sort of calls as his second home state. Um, but, uh, and, and it's a state with a lot of Trump supporters, but it's also a state with an increasingly diverse population. And um, uh, we could get into real details on this, just looking at the early voting from four years ago and the early voting today. I won't do that right now, but I mean, what, what's your take on it, Bill? Well, the early voting uh, shows it's a, a virtual tie, right, as, yeah. as of today, um, which may not be a good sign for Clinton uh, because the Democrats did better on early voting last time. The other thing is, in speaking in her favor, we do know that the Latino vote uh, turnout has been very strong and unlike uh, previous years in Florida, is much more mixed because there are more Puerto Ricans and fewer uh, Cubans uh, who are voting. And they're all Latinos, but they have very different political traditions. Uh, so that could make a difference. 
Yeah, that's important, an important point. The Cuban vote in, um, in Florida initially, it, certainly of, of the older generation, was largely an anti-Castro hardline policy against Cuba vote, which traditionally voted Republican. And so this change, both as there's the sort of younger generations of Cubans maybe have a different view on that issue, and, and as you're seeing more people come into Florida from Puerto Rico, from other parts of Latin America, you're getting a much more diverse group. So this one, boy, uh, they, if they call this one uh, before even two or three hours, I'll be surprised. But uh, that'll be a close one to watch. So we have to hurry up a little bit uh, right now, but we have easy states, um, the next ones. Um, Georgia, Robert Blum Gymnasium in Berlin, they think the 16 votes go to Donald Trump. I think that's, that's not an easy state. It's actually another one that the Clintons have been targeting. <laughs> Trump is leading in the polls, but it's one I would watch because its polls close very early. They close at seven o'clock, which means 1 a.m. our time. If the election is looking really, really close, even if Trump's in the lead in Georgia, that's probably a good sign for Hillary Clinton. Um, but you, I think that I would not disagree with that prediction that Trump ultimately wins. Yes, I, I think that's right, but uh, 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 the early results may be curious there if they come out otherwise. Hawaii. Um, we have one school which is here. It's the Claire Bloch Schule um, from Berlin. What, I, what is your take on this? Yeah, unfortunately, only me, the teacher. We have an evening school, so my students are at work right now, and I'll join them at school later. Where do you predict that Hawaii will go uh, to Hillary Clinton? The GE Lessing Gymnasium and in Hohenstein Ernsthal and the Gabriele von Bülow Gymnasium in Berlin um, think the same way. So this state and his 11 votes go to, uh, sorry, and his four votes go to Hillary Clinton. Idaho. Um, no school is here to present it, so it's um, clearly Donald Trump in this, uh, uh, in that uh, take. Wilhelm Gymnasium Hamburg and BIP Kreativitätsgymnasium Leipzig. Um, Illinois, Bettina von Arnim Schule in Berlin is here. What is your vote on this? So, based on our research, we decided that the people of Illinois will elect Hillary Clinton. Thank you. The Norbertus Gymnasium in Magdeburg um, thinks the same way. So, Illinois and its 20 votes go to Hillary Clinton. Indiana, um, the Gymnasium uh, of the city of Alsdorf and the BIP Kreativitätsschule in Leipzig again, they think um, the state goes to Donald Trump. Now we come to Iowa. Iowa is a swing state as well. Um, we have um, two schools representing, adapting the state. It's the Gymnasium Essen Werden and this Alexander von Humboldt Gymnasium in Greifswald. And both of the schools, um, they think uh, the six votes go to Hillary Clinton for sure. Oh, I, I doubt it. It yeah. looks like it's going the other way from yeah, everything we know. The latest poll was Trump up seven in, uh, in Iowa and it's, Interestingly enough, Iowa is a state that's about 97% white, so it's a very non-diverse state. It's a state that has lost population as people leave Iowa and go to other places, typically the Sun Belt or the West, for jobs, younger people. So it's older folks and many who have suffered uh, as a result of the speedy change in globalization and technology and pretty much the demographic that is uh, frustrating um, Uh, people and, and uh, that tend to be Donald Trump supporters. The, Iowa did go for Obama the last two times, but I think fundamentally because Iowa voters are voting for change, and the change vote in this time is going to be certainly a vote for Donald Trump. Do you think our crowd is too Clinton friendly? If I look at the map right now, uh, <laughs> Clinton seems to be winning already in one well, hundred. Certainly, <laughs> certainly wouldn't object to that, but uh, it, no, I think it. Uh, I think maybe. Um, Uh, I mean, I, I mean, both. I'm, I'm shotting down the states that uh, uh, are called for Clinton or called for Trump that I think might go the other way. And I would say, uh, for sure, uh, Arkansas and uh, I'm sorry, Alaska and 
Iowa, I would say, probably belong in the Trump column and possibly Arizona, but that's enough of a toss up that, you know, won't mess with that. But those two, I think, are pretty much for sure. Okay, let's move on to Kansas. Um, the Tony Jensen Gemeinschaftsschule in Kiel and the Carolinum in Neustrelitz, um, they both think uh, it goes to Donald Trump. Um, the same with, um, no, sorry. Uh, let's go to Kentucky. We have um, the Lilienthal Gymnasium in Berlin, uh, Berlin who gives the vote right now. Um, so we think that the vote will go uh, for Trump and just Trump the vote. Are you in 12th grade or 11th? <laughs> um, I'm in 10th grade. 10th grade, welcome. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want to be impolite. Um, Johannes Matthäus, Matthäus Gymnasium in Rochlitz, so many different school names. Um, they also think, uh, no, we are, sorry, we, yes. um, Kentucky goes to Donald Trump. Louisiana, um, we have one school from Berlin, but um, they aren't here. OSZ uh, Georg Schlesinger, um, I'm sorry, you are here. <laughs> Louisiana, what is your vote on this? First of all, I want to thank my teachers for making this possible, Mrs. <laughs> Mr. Franz and Mrs. Mayer. <laughs> and, um, and everything will happen, but after true researches, we assume that Louisiana is won by the Republicans. Everyone agrees? Okay. Then we can go on to Maine. Um, we have three schools and one school is here, the Kurt Tucholsky Oberschule of Berlin. What is your vote on Maine? Um, we will uh, believe that Maine goes to Hillary Clinton. You are not alone. The same opinion has the Georg Herkwe Gymnasium in Berlin and the Alexander von Humboldt Gymnasium in Greifswald. I'd say there's a nuance to this, though, and that Maine and Nebraska actually are two states that award their electoral votes by giving the two electoral votes that represent the two senators to whoever wins the statewide vote. But the other two votes, they have two congressional districts to whoever wins in those congressional districts. So Maine is one where it's actually possible that, that uh, even though it's likely Hillary would win the statewide vote, that Trump would win the vote in that one congressional district. So it might go three and one. Do you agree with that, Bill? Yes, this, uh, that district is the northernmost district possibly in the country. Um, it's, uh, there are probably more moose there than there are people. And there's certainly a lot of guns. So I think Donald Trump might well carry that uh, congressional district. Thank you. We have Maryland, close to Washington, D.C., um, and perhaps not surprisingly, the Wilhelm and Alexander von Humboldt Gymnasium from Hedstedt thinks it goes to Hillary Clinton, 10 electoral votes. Massachusetts, Massachusetts. <laughs> I, <laughs> We have three schools. Um, one school is here, Askanisches Gymnasium Berlin. Is that close to the Askanischer Platz? That's where the Tagesspiegel uh, uh, is, so. What is your vote, please? According to our research, um, Ms. Uh, Hillary Clinton will win in the state of Massachusetts. You are also not alone in this opinion. The Max Planck Gymnasium Gelsenkirchen and the Evangelische Gesamtschule Philipp Melanchthon, Melanchthon in Wittenberg also thinks uh, Hillary Clinton gets the 11 electoral votes. Gone. Michigan. We have three schools, um, not, not one of them is here. We have the Wilhelm Kraft Gesamtschule and Barry and Springs High School. Um, it's, uh, it's a corporation, I think. And the, um, we have the Schuldorf Bergstraße, Schuldorf Bergstraße and Wildermuth Gymnasium, and all of them think um, Hillary Clinton will win this state and the 16 votes, electoral votes. Um, I, I would make a remark here because it's close in Michigan. And more importantly, if Trump were to win Michigan, I think he may win the election because it will indicate that they are, there is a swing uh, that goes right across the upper Midwest. 
And so this may be a telltale sign. If that ha I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if it does, watch out. Unless he loses Florida. But uh, I, it, which would be, I mean, boy, and then you're, you're literally looking at, a, at almost a Bush-Gore situation where it's going to be very, very close. But to me, um, if I were a Clinton, you know, if I, if I were watching this, the, one of the best things to look at in terms of knowing both where the campaigns are confident and where the campaigns are nervous is where are these guys going in the last few days. And both Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton have been in Michigan in literally the 72 hour period of time before the election, which tells me they're worried about Michigan. And don't forget, Hillary lost Michigan to Bernie Sanders in the, in the primary, so it wasn't a huge area of strength for her as well. So I would agree with Bill. I think that's one we're gonna wanna pay real close attention to. It is a state that where the polls close in the first round of poll closures, so we'll, uh, you know, that'll be one that I think people will be watching, watching all night. And if it's, uh, if Hillary wins it, it'll be a big sigh of relief for her. Uh, and if it's going really close or, or, or Trump appears to be winning it, it's going to be a big sign of worry for the Clinton folks. Hmm.